So in one of my last videos, I talked about how you can create these undeletable files. And if you want to check that out video, it is in the description box below. And I basically talked about how you can create these con files, which once you do create, they can't be deleted by the operating system. To prove that, as you can see, if I run this little command echo and save whatever I enter here into a con.txt file, I will store it here on this drive. And if I hit refresh, you can see con.txt does exist. And if I basically try to delete the file, uh, you can't do that. If I try to basically uh, rename the file, you can't do that either. And I'll show you this. And I thought about how it actually can be used in malware. But today I found a nice little way in which attackers can use this in malware. But don't worry, I also figured out a way to basically delete these files because in the last video I couldn't do it. So today I'm going to show you how you can actually delete these files with no strings attached. And maybe if you want to learn hacking and become good at it, then check out my course, which is down in the description box below. All right. So if you're wondering why do I have this convert gigabyte to byte website open? Well, don't worry, it will be very handy later on. So I'll show you how you can delete these files. But if I said an attacker can use these files to flood your system, for example, and you can't delete them, that would be really bad. But let's be real. If an attacker wants to basically flood your system, they need to create a large, large file. Like they need a big, 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 big string. And even if they do have a big string, chances are that string won't take up too much space because look text t txt2 if i check the properties it's zero bytes but in the at the end of the day it still does take space don't worry about it but attackers can essentially just basically create a virus that would fill your space because it will take time and you will probably catch on to it so if they want to create a program which will write very fast 10 gigabytes or even 20 gigabytes on your computer it's going to be taking a lot but i figured out a neat little way on windows that you probably haven't ever seen before and it's also very interesting thing about windows which honestly i didn't even i didn't even know about as well so i'll show you right now windows is very tricky and i'll show you a nice little command which i don't know if you actually ever heard about it it is called fsutil and it's a Windows command that I just recently discovered and it can be used to create large files, but not actually create large files if you know what I mean. Firstly, before I actually show you, I have to check to show you the local disk D over here. And as you can see, this disk has 74 gigabytes of free space. So just so you know, basically it has 74 gigabytes free space, nothing crazy here. So if I was to type fsutil and then basically say file and then create new, you can basically specify a file name, which for example can be test.txt, after which you put a number of bytes you want this file to take up. But if I click enter, you know, this might confuse you because take a look at this. This txt file has 1000 bytes or four kilobytes in total. So what even is going on here? So if I open this file, you can see it's empty, but it's not quite empty. You see there's some stuff empty here, but it's like not an empty line. So what even is going on? My assumption is that fsutil basically creates a new file, but instead of populating it with random junk data, it basically reserves 1000 bytes on that file for you to write. So basically it will be reserved. Hence why I need this because I want to take up 10 gigabytes of space. So let's copy this up and let's go create a new file like this test, uh, maybe test2.txt and I'll put this amount of bytes. And if I click enter the speed, look at the speed and guess how much this file now takes. Click on properties, 10 gigabytes of data. And if you don't believe me, let me show you this PC. Now we have 64 gigabytes free. So we did take 10 gigabytes of space. But if you open this file, you can see oh, it's too large for Notepad too. <laughs> but the problem with it now is, okay, you like malware created this file, you just select it and click delete. No worry about it. And of course it's 10 gigabytes, so you can delete it. But what if an attacker would basically combine what I've just shown in the last video and create an undeletable con file, which will stick on your computer? So again, we might have to use this, but don't worry about it. So basically put a full absolute path and just say, for example, con.virus maybe, I don't know. And let's click create. And would you look at that? It was very fast. Let me click refresh here because this is on a drive. 
And Condat Virus, if I click Properties, is zero bytes. Why is it zero bytes, you may ask? Well, if I go back to this PC, you can see, uh, would you look at that? 64 gigabytes free. So we did take 10 gigabytes, even though if somebody was to check the properties of this file, it shows zero bytes. It is insanity to show zero bytes for a file which actually takes 10 gigabytes. What the hell is going on, Windows? So you might want to check it out maybe like this. Can I do there? And yeah, if I do it there, you can see how big this file actually is. But now that you came a long way to see how attackers can abuse you, I'll show you how you can remove these files, even though right now in Windows, right click on it, click delete, you can't. Nothing you can do about it. Not even actually moving it around. So it's a bad it's a bad problem for Windows generally, and I don't understand why this actually exists. But to be fair, on Windows 11, it's all right. You can delete these files, but on Windows 10, you can't. So let's get going with how do you delete these files. You have to use WASL. You kind of have to use it. So basically, you have to use WASL to delete it, which is kind of a Linux mount on top of Windows kind of thingy. I don't know. I don't know if that's a good explanation, but you can basically open up open it up by, for example, going here on the disk, going CMD, and then just typing, for example, here, once you open the CMD type VASL and then open it. If you have it installed, if you don't, you have to install it. And if I type LS, you can see that we have all of these files. And to remove a file, you say RM test.txt. And of course, you know, you can see in the background, it's gone. But let's now remove the con that virus. So you basically go RM con virus. And would you look at that? It's now removed. And if we go back to this PC, we still have a lot of space for free. So there you have it. Just RM con TXT deletes these files with no issues, with no hassle. And in the last video, I, I did promise I will make another one to basically find a way. So thanks everybody who recommended this because it's generally a big problem for Windows to allow such thing, especially with reserving big amounts of data for these files that you can delete. So now if you see any of these files anywhere, now you know how to delete them. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay responsible, and as always, peace.